In 1990, a nearly complete specimen of Tyrannosaurus rex was unearthed. Scientists from Montana State University found that these bones were not totally fossilized. Sections of the bone were like fresh bone and contain what seems to be blood cells and hemoglobin. In 2002, scientists split open a T-Rex thigh bone and discovered flexible, even elastic, soft tissue meat still inside. Microscopic examination revealed fine, delicate blood vessels with what appear to be intact red blood cells and other type of cells, like osteocytes, which are bone-forming cells. The mummified carcass of a duck-billed hadrosaur named Leonardo also turned up in Montana. The preserved soft tissue covering 90% of the fossil contained muscle, nail material, a beak, and skin. Wow. All this has been found inside dinosaur bones, eh? Well, since this comes from a couple of guys who call themselves the Truth Group, I have to point out that one or two assertions aren't exactly, well, truthful. Firstly, there was no soft tissue meat inside the 2002 T-Rex bone. I know, because unlike the Truth Group, I actually read the paper by Mary Schweitzer reporting her discovery. She describes the microscopic material she found as transparent soft tissue vessels which floated freely in the demineralizing solution. In other words, not meat. And she makes absolutely no mention of finding red blood cells in the dinosaur bones. All she describes are round red microstructures. And she didn't find osteocytes either. Schweitzer describes finding microstructures virtually identical in size, location and morphology to osteocytes found in modern ostriches. It's possible, of course, that they were once osteocytes, just as this fossil was once a finger bone and this was once a coral. Now they're not. Apart from that, soft tissue didn't cover 90% of the fossil hadrosaur. That's right, scientific paper again. Whatever website the Truth Group copied this from got confused because 90% of the hadrosaur's body is described in the paper as being covered in fossilized skin. Uh, that's not skin, it's fossilized skin, which means that all the skin has been replaced by minerals. And according to the same paper, no muscle, no nail material and no beak. All of this organic material has been fossilized. Apart from that, and no haemoglobin was found in the 1990 fossil. Again, read the paper. What Schweitzer says she found wasn't haemoglobin, which is a protein, but haemoglobin breakdown products. And again, the truth group insists she found blood cells, but in the paper she makes absolutely no mention of finding blood cells. Apart from that, the truth group did get one thing right. The T-Rex fossil was found in 1990. Congratulations on the research, guys. So, let's just recap. We know from researchers who examined and described the soft tissue that no blood cells were found in dinosaur bones. No osteocytes, no haemoglobin, no meat, no flesh. No one has ever squeezed blood out of any dinosaur's soft tissue. Got that? You know, we actually find uh, dinosaur uh, soft tissue, things like red blood cells. And can you imagine that lasting millions of years? <laughs> uh. We actually found blood cells in a T-Rex bone in 1990 in the state of Montana and they still had hemoglobin inside. Oh. These are actual photographs of dinosaur flesh found in a T-Rex bone in March of 2005. Oh. We have now found fresh flesh not only in T-Rex material, but also hadrosaur and titanosaur. Yes, we do have something between our ears. We have eyes, so we can look at scientific papers, and we have a brain which can read what they say. Grady, you're obviously able to look at the pictures from these scientific papers, but for some reason you can't read the captions. What have you got between your ears? Common sense would say that if these bones really were tens of millions of years old, then the blood cells and the hemoglobin would have totally disintegrated by now. But as we now know, there were no blood cells and no hemoglobin. They had disintegrated. Common sense doesn't tell us to what extent they should have disintegrated over what period of time. Only observation can do that. Common sense once told us that heavy objects fall faster than light ones. Common sense told us that a boat made of metal can't possibly float. That living organisms can't possibly survive in temperatures that would melt lead. But in all these cases, common sense was wrong. 
In science, we put our observations ahead of our beliefs. For those of the evolutionary mindset, they're busy scrambling trying to prove how dinosaurs and soft tissue survive for over 65 million years. Yes, the question isn't whether organic residue survives in 70 million year old fossils. The question is how. After all, most fossils don't contain any remnant soft tissue. So how does it happen in a few exceptional cases? Schweitzer noticed that all the fossils containing this material had several things in common. They were buried rapidly in sandstone, they were found several meters below ground, and the soft tissue was found inside unbroken bones. Rapid burial meant that the soft tissue didn't have time to decompose on the surface. Being buried deeply up to the point they were found meant they were protected from water. They were also protected from oxidation. And because the soft tissue was found inside bones, it had effectively spent the last 80 million years in a sealed and buried canister. So none of this is a problem for geologists. It's just another discovery. Any other problems? One thing that's been a real problem to evolutionists are what are called a polystrat uh, tree trunks, like this one which is going through a large vein of coal. Now how could all that vegetable material be laid down there and yet this tree trunk is going through it? Well this has never been a problem for geologists, but do go on. You see all these sedimentary layers, but jutting through them uh, are these fossilized trees. Uh, here's a tree, still planted, and the, and the evolutionists, if you didn't have the tree there, the evolutionists would look at all the layers of strata that are in this picture and go, oh yeah, billions of years or, or millions of years of strata. Well, that's quite a tree that can grow for millions of years up through all the strata. So you see that these uh, tree trunks extend up uh, uh, through multiple layers of strata. The evolutionist only has three choices to solve this problem. One, you can either say that these trees somehow stood upright for millions and millions and millions of years while the dirt layers formed around them, which is impossible because the trees would rot away, right? Two, your only other option is this, that you can say these trees grew through hundreds of feet through solid rock looking for sunlight, which is impossible. Or three, you can say, hey, those trees got deposited that way in a worldwide flood, just like the Bible says. Are those the only options we've got, Billy? Well, of course, there is a fourth option. That's obvious to anyone who's ever observed nature in action. But it's so obvious, I'm going to see if the creationists can work it out for themselves. Any ideas? And when these disasters hit, what it does is it causes things like trees to be blasted through several sedimentary layers. Now you're just weird. They're called poly meaning mini strata fossils. They're all over the earth, folks. Consider how quickly this tree trunk in Germany was where it was found, must have been buried. Aha, now you've got it. The basic explanation is, is that this was all laid down rapidly. Pendleton's got it too. And these old dudes have figured it out. So this is an indication that they were buried very rapidly. So we have a fourth option on the table, that the trees were buried rapidly. And we can see that happening all around us every day, in swamps and estuaries and in flooded valleys. Tree wood can survive for hundreds and even thousands of years under the right conditions, and trees will stay upright as the sediment from floods and depositional mud and silt build up around them. But don't geologists tell us this material took millions and millions of years to accumulate? Kevin? If you didn't have the tree there, the evolutionists would look at all the layers of strata that are in this picture and go, oh yeah, billions of years or, or millions of years of strata. The idea that geologists conclude layers of rock always take millions of years to form is a fallacy that creationist preachers like to foist on their gullible congregations, safe in the knowledge that none of them will ever read a geology textbook. Of course, some thick layers of rock like chalk do take millions of years, but other types of rock get deposited much faster. We can see that today, and we can see seasonal flood deposits in rock layers millions of years old. By counting the layers, we can see that these were created in just a few hundred years, easily burying upright trees. As I mentioned, these polystrate uh, tree trunks are a problem to evolution. They have no answer for this. To say this is a problem for geologists is laughable, not just because geologists know the answer, but because they've known it for a century and a half. In this book, published in 1868, J.W. Dawson explains exactly how polystrat trees were formed by the swamp deposits being built up around them. That explanation hasn't changed in 140 years. Dawson even has an illustration of one of these polystrat trees in his book. Hang on, 
Where have we seen this picture before? Uh, here's an upright tree, a petrified tree. This guy was working in the mine and he came across a tree going through several layers of rock. Oh, the irony. Here's Billy Crone telling us there's no geological explanation for these mysterious fossil trees while holding up a picture from a 140-year-old geology textbook that tells us exactly how they were formed. We saw this phenomenon with the dinosaur blood. Instead of looking at the pictures, Billy, you should have been reading the story.